Hello, just six verses to do today. Uh, we're looking at Acts 14, 8 through 11. Um, so the chapter 14 begins with Paul in Iconium. Uh, and after being some time there, he seems to be pushed out of the city. And he goes a little bit south to Lystra. Uh, and that's where we pick him up uh, in verse 8. And a certain man, powerless in the feet, was sitting in Lystra. Anyway, uh, you can kind of get the idea here. A certain man, powerless in Lystra, in the feet, was sitting. Um, this is the indefinite, uh, usually we'd call it the indefinite pronoun, but it seems to be modifying man, and so we might call it the indefinite adjective. A certain man, powerless in the feet, uh, kind of dative of, of uh, um, maybe sphere. In what, in what realm was he powerless? Well, in the sphere of the feet. <laughs> anyway, in Lystra, dative of uh, location, of place. He was sitting. This seems to be a uh, imperfect from kathe mai. A mai, it's deponent. Uh, so this is a third person singular um, middle or passive ending. Uh, imperfect, I think. Uh, he was lame from the womb of the mother of him. So there's a genitive, genitive, genitive. Uh, this is nominative. Lame from the womb of the mother of him. So lame from his mother's womb. Uh, in other words, he has been uh, crippled since birth. Uh, who uh, never walked. Uh, so this is a relative clause, relative pronoun, adverb. Uh, sigma epsilon nu. I've asked you to... I've asked you to try to memorize that. What is it? What is it? What is it? Sen, 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 sen. It's aorist, active, indicative, third, singular. Uh, from peripateo, there's the augment right there, to walk. Uh, Aristotle's followers were called the peripatetics. They apparently walked while they talked. Okay, verse 9. This man heard the Paul. Uh, this is sen again. So what is sen? Aorist, active, indicative, third, singular. Uh, from akuo, that eight is an augment, he heard. Uh, akuo can take its object in the genitive, which is why Paul is genitive here. Um, I might call that a genitive of root idea or something like that. He heard Paul speaking. Uh, this is a participle. My aunt is an active participle. Laleo, present participle, present active participle. Uh, as uh, is um, a third declension ending, arconantas. It's genitive singular, so it matches Paul. Paul's the one speaking. He heard Paul speaking. Who, now I know from the context here that it's talking about Paul, but it's a little confusing um, because uh, the subject of the previous uh, sentence is the lame man. So I would expect this perhaps to be the lame man, but it's Paul. Um, uh, who, having uh, looked at him and having seen that he has faith to be saved. Now, this is, I was saying in my podcast, that the word saved, especially in Luke, this is a special use of Luke. The word saved can mean to be healed. It's a kind of saving, isn't it? Saved from your, although we don't want to, we don't want to, there is a fallacy of rude idea. You don't want to say that, that everywhere that the word sozo is used, there is a, a sense of saving somewhere in there. Words don't work that way. Sometimes words have completely unrelated, uh, I mean, you know, historically, there may be some archaeology you could do, but etymolo etymological archaeology. But in, for all intents and purposes, sometimes words just come to mean widely different things. And so uh, it is not at all clear that we should make a connection to save, the concept of save um, in, in this use here. It basically just means to heal here. Um, to be healed. A theta, theta eta tells me it's eris passive. It's an infinitive because the I, eris passive infinitive. Um, and then uh, two plus the infinitive e either is a purpose or a result uh, construction. Uh, he has faith so that he could be healed uh, with the result that. I would go with uh, infinitive of result here with the result that he would be healed. Um, that he has faith is a a noun clause. Uh, Hoti can introduce a noun clause. Having seen, this is the uh, aorist participle of horao. We've seen it a lot. Um, so, uh, who, Paul, who, uh, having looked at him and having seen that he has faith to be saved, who said, uh, that is, Paul said, Paul said it with a great voice, 
uh, aping an heiress, right? Heiress, active indicative, third singular from uh, Lego. Quote, direct discourse, rise upon the feet of you, straight. Uh, rise straight, you rise straight. Um, so this is the quote. Uh, this is imperative. Uh, I believe it is uh, aorist imperative. Anastathi, we've seen it. We've seen it before. Um, again, there's a comparison between Paul and Peter, both heal a lame man, and there's a comparison between them and Jesus, who healed a lame man. Uh, and he rose and he was walking. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, I believe, Ireo, the aorist, irregular aorist of Ireo. Just memorize it. Uh, he rose and he was walking. Imperfect here, though. This is Eris. This is imperfect. See the alpha? Uh, the lambda is a liquid verb, so it doesn't do sigmas. Okay, uh, part two. And the crowds, uh, by the way, the reason hoy has an accent is because te is an enclitic that doesn't do accents, uh, unless it absolutely has to. Hoy doesn't do accents either, but the te made it. Um, because you have two... This is a proclitic, this is an enclitic, neither of them want an accent. And so the first one has to take one, just has to. And that's why there's an accent there. It's not, it's not the relative pronoun, okay? Uh, and the crowds having seen what, this is the relative pronoun, what Paul did, aorist, sen, remember? What is sen? Sen, aorist, active, indicative, third, singular, of poiao, there's the augment on the front. <clears throat> what Paul did, they they um, they raise they they took up uh, they ep epiro they raised up the voice of them in the Lacaonian in the Lacaonian dialect. So most of the world spoke Greek as a business language as the lingua franca, but that doesn't mean they didn't have their local dialects as well. Kind of reminds me of, for example, if you were in Peru, uh, there would be. Um, uh, kind of indigenous peoples in Peru um, that they could speak Spanish, but it's not their language at home necessarily. In the Philippines, I think of this. So Tagalog is the, the main language of the Philippines, but uh, you might speak Alicano, you know, if you're from up, up country. Um, so um, uh, they speak in Lacaonian, Lacaonian saying, quote, this is a present participle, present active participle, the gods having been likened to men, have come down to us. And I talk about uh, uh, what is almost certainly uh, going through the minds of the Lacaonians and what Luke wants us to think, wants his audience to think here. There's a, there's a mythological story that they're almost certainly thinking about here. Um, this is a aorist passive because of the theta epsilon. Uh, my unt is a participle, so it's aorist passive participle of hama, hum, hamoi o o o. Um, so having been likened to men, they came down to us. This is the aorist of katabino, but the ein isn't there. And so it's uh, aorist, see the sigma alpha? Although sigma alpha is part of the ending here. Sorry, it's third person plural ending. The, the song goes on esse, amen, eta, on horison, and this is the ason. Okay, verse 12. And <clears throat> they were calling the Barnabas Zeus. <clears throat> this is one form of the word Zeus. Um, begins with a delta. Sorry. It's a more of a, uh, I think, I personally think of it as a more colloquial way of referring to Zeus. Via. Um, uh, anyway, it's kind of like God in a way, because Zeus is the king of the gods, I suppose. Uh, forgive me if I've failed. I, that, those are my thoughts. And I do have some uh, subconscious of things learned in the past and almost forgotten. Uh, this is imperfect, I believe. Uh, they were calling. They began to call the Barnabas Zeus, and the Paul Hermes. Hermes, of course, being the messenger of the God, the spokesman of the gods, and we see this here. Since he, uh, that is Paul, was the one uh, leading the word. Uh, he's the one that did most of the speaking, or let's call Paul the mouth, shall we? Uh, it sticks. Um, so that fit. But Zeus is in charge of this mission trip. He's the one signing the checks. Verse 13. And the priest of the Zeus the Vios, uh, the, the priest of the Zeus of the being before the city. Um, so uh, one translation I was looking at uh, likened this to the, the temple of Zeus at the, begin, at the opening of the city, which I suppose could suggest there was more than one, did it? Is there another Zeus temple in the city? This is the priest of the, of the Zeus at the beginning of this, at the front of the city? Anyway, 
Um, down here we see, and I'm gonna, let me, if you don't mind, take it off of uh, full screen so I can see. Having brought uh, bulls and stems, having or garlands, I think, something like that, uh, upon the gates uh, with the crowds, he was wanting uh, to sacrifice. So Enenka is the, the uh, heiress of Pharaoh. It's, it's, it's irregular. We just have to memorize it. It doesn't have its augment, so it's, it's a participle. It's a nominative masculine singular participle. Uh, aorist active participle. Uh, don't let the kappa throw you off. It's irregular. I've just memorized it. So it goes something like this. And, uh, and the priest, again, why does this have an accent? It's not. It's, this is the relative pronoun with an accent. This is not the relative pronoun. And you notice that the accent's different, right? The accent here is going this way. It's going down sliding this way because it is a genuine accent and it's followed by another word. But here you'll notice it's going this way. Uh, and the, the only reason why that accent's there is because te is a freeloader. And so somebody has to pick up the stress slack. Uh, so that's, that's just the article. And the priest of Zeus, um, blah, 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 the one being before the city, having brought bulls and garlands upon the gates, with the crowds, he was wanting to sacrifice. Present active infinitive of thuo, and then this is the imperfect of thelo. He was wanting uh, to sacrifice. Okay, um, by the way, um, if you did the podcast, you weren't able to see my notes, uh, but here is the, the reference to the story uh, in Ovid's Metamorphoses in Book 8, lines 616 to 724. If you want to read the story of Baucus and Philemon, and here are some of my talking points uh, from the podcast. Well, have a great day and hope to see you again tomorrow.